Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. During the Oligocene, Ethiopia was covered with low-lying tropical forests and open floodplains, crisscrossed by rivers heavy with sediment. A pronounced wet and dry season dynamic was in place, with arid, intensively hot summers and wet, monsoonal winters, being broadly comparable to the modern Okavango Delta. This ecosystem produced dense layers of siltstone, forming the fossil-bearing rocks of the Chilga Formation. Unfortunately, animal remains recovered from the site are of poor quality, being mostly comprised of broken jumbles of bone along with handfuls of teeth and scattered postcranial elements. The overall number of officially described genera is low and demonstrates similarities with faunal communities in North Africa. Fossil remains are dominated by non-avian dinosaurs, of which nine genera have so far been described. The most surprising of these discoveries was the holotype of a small basal salurosaur, represented by sacral vertebrae, ribs, a left tibia, and a partial skull with associated teeth. Dubbed Chilgosaurus, this genus was a two-meter generalized carnivore with a gracile build. Remains of similarly basal salurosaurs were found in late Eocene deposits at Fayum, Egypt, and initially proved difficult to classify due to their poor preservation. Recent studies have united Fayum's pair of unnamed basal salurosaurs in a clade alongside Chilgosaurus, known as Fuscosauroidea. These remarkably archaic animals sit near the base of Salurosauria, in a phylogenetic position close to the Cretaceous South American Bicentenaria. Alter Earth paleontologists have suggested that Fuscosauroids must have originated in the Cretaceous, diverging from the ancestors of Bicentenaria as South America and Africa completed their divide roughly 100 million years ago. Given the paucity of African late Cretaceous deposits, it is therefore not surprising that this lineage of delicate, unassuming predators escaped notice in the fossil record. Chilgosaurus itself would have occupied a niche filled on the northern continents by Troodontans, being an adaptable hunter of lizards, snakes and small mammals. Another unusual theropod was present in this ecosystem, the muckredontid noosaurian Zipholestes. A close relative of the late Eocene Egyptian Tetraprotodon, this genus was a 2.5 meter omnivore, possessing the highly derived heterodont teeth characteristic of its family. The teeth at the tips of the jaws were greatly elongated, forming a superficially beak-like structure. Muckredontids utilised this feature in order to grab and manipulate food items and potential prey. Zipholestes itself is only known from a single partial skull, although this was well preserved enough to enable the animal's potential diet to be reconstructed. Like the more basal tetraprotodon, Zipholestes appears to have been an omnivore, feeding on a mixture of small animals, fruit, seeds and carrion. In terms of overall ecological niche, Muckredontids seem to have been African parallels to the oviraptorosaurs native to Eurasia and North America. Herbivorous genera were more common, as one would expect given the dynamics of land-based tetrapods. This faunal community consisted of a single genus of moderately sized titanosaur, the high-browsing 15-meter Bahirisaurus, along with a more diverse assemblage of ornithischians. Two genera of large thecellosauroids were present. The smaller of the two, Paeomodon, was a member of the semi-aquatic family Lacustrisauridae and was a stocky 7-metre herbivore that fed on soft aquatic plants. The genus was also present in late Eocene sites in Egypt and Sudan, suggesting that conditions across this region were fairly stable into the Oligocene, consisting of humid, tropical river basins and swamp forests. Paeomodon was in some ways reminiscent of the ancient Iguanodontian Lurdosaurus, being a heavily built quadrupedal animal that inhabited ancient waterways. This was confirmed by analysis of Paeomodon's unusually dense limb bones, with oxygen isotope studies concluding that the genus spent a significant amount of its time submerged in water. A larger, more terrestrial relative was also present in the form of the massive Tarnosaurus. A relatively basal member of the family Seismo titanidae, Tarnosaurus was a 15-meter flexible browser, possessing a graviportal quadrupedal posture. Interestingly, Tarnosaurus was already significantly larger than the hadrosaurs with which it shared its environment, which tended to be rather modest in size. The holotype is represented by a partial upper jaw, parts of the brain case, a near-complete right forelimb, ribs and vertebrae from the neck and tail. In life, the neck was moderately elongated and flexible, 
allowing the square-tipped, narrow bill and jaws access to a wide array of plant material, both at ground level and high in the trees. In all, while relatively rare in the Oligocene, seismotitanids would later explode in terms of range and diversity in the Miocene, when savanna biomes spread to cover much of North Africa and Eurasia. In addition, two Afro-Rhabdodonts were present at the site. One was a species of the genus Wabisaurus, the ground sloth-like browsing Zalingosaurid, known from better material recovered from early Oligocene Egypt. The other, however, was a rather different animal. Angotodon was a basal member of the clade Ungumasauroidea, a lineage of armoured, low-browsing herbivores. The genus was small compared to its later, more derived relatives, measuring just three metres long and retaining a fluctuative bipedal posture. In form, the genus somewhat resembled the Jurassic Thyreophora and Scelidosaurus, with robust heavy jaws and leaf-shaped teeth suitable for slicing vegetation. The holotype specimen was found with associated osteoderms, the size and shape of which suggest that Angotodon's back, tail and flanks were covered with small rows of studded osteoderms. During the early Miocene, Ungumasauroids would spread out of Africa and into Eurasia, where they would face little competition. Given the poor state of preservation at this site, it is then quite unusual that two genera of pterosaurs have been described from Chilga. These animals have a notoriously patchy fossil record on Alter Earth, so the presence of two rather different members of the group being present at one site was an exciting discovery. The larger and better known genus was Teshigeria, being a member of the terrestrial stalking Stymphalidae. This family of lightly built and generally large predators were a part of the larger clade Aramborgianoidea, with the Eocene North African genus Bennu being a close relative of Teshigeria. The genus is known from a single specimen consisting of cervical vertebrae and a damaged left femur with tooth marks suggested of scavenging. In life, the pterosaur stood roughly 7 feet tall, with an estimated wingspan of 6 metres, which is rather small by the standards of the family. Mammal remains at the Chilga site are rare, with finds limited to teeth and fragments of jawbone. Both Zelestans and Gondwanathirs were present, with their distinctive bunodont and hypsodont molars having been described, but not yet assigned to any particular genera. As we lack postcranial elements, it's difficult to make any conclusions regarding their life appearance, although both groups lent towards herbivory. The only genus of mammal to have received a taxonomic name from the site is the remarkable Afarolestes, a large hypercarnivorous eutriconodont. Known from a well-preserved lower jaw with associated teeth, this carnivore was very large for an Oligocene African mammal, measuring almost a metre long in life. A member of the derived and superficially cat-like clade Triconophelida, Afarolestes is presumed to have been an active hunter and capable climber. It would have preyed on small reptiles, birds, mammals, and even juvenile ornithischians. In all, this ocelot-sized genus was a forerunner of later and larger predatory eutriconodonts that inhabited Africa's forests during the Miocene. Thanks for watching, everyone. The next video will cover the basal crocodiliforms, so until then, I'll see you again soon. Cheerio.